I pray that no, those who need to hear the word will be able to hear. Yes, Jesus is coming back real soon. It's not whether he's coming back or not, but rather are we ready for his second coming? Are we ready? As we're ending this year, we almost through with January, and entering into the new year, I might say how fast time does fly. And it seemed like only yesterday that when we first come up here was the year, well, Y2K was the year 2000. People were giving their opinion about what was going to happen. When I was fasting at that time, before I came up here down south, I had many people wanting to come into the church and speak about the Y2K. But God never gave me the freedom because I didn't believe in the Y2K. If I'd invited them in, I would be contradicting what I knew God was telling me. And that's the same thing right now. With all this turmoil that's going on, many people are saying many things. And this is just one thing that I have to say. Either God is in control or they are. I put my faith and trust in God. I don't put my faith and trust in man. They're human just like anybody else. I want to know what God is saying. I need to hear from God. Because when I go through trials of life, I need to hear what God is saying in order to apply it to my life. There's a lot of things that's going on trying to catch people's attention. And my prayer that this church would stand on the Word of God, interpreted by the Holy Spirit. The Y2K did not come to pass. Many things will not come to pass. But God's Word will. But there is one thing for certain. Jesus Christ came as a baby, wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. And Jesus Christ is coming back in power, glory, and splendor. Amen. As in Acts chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, which we just read, reveals to us this Jesus which was taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you see him go into heaven. Guess who's coming again? Jesus. The point of it is, are we ready? <laughs> Opinions about the second coming differ. There's a lot of arguments. In fact, there's too many arguments. Jesus is coming again. But let me share something with you. When my wife passed on 10 weeks ago today, it made no difference what other people told me. But what made all the difference was my relationship with Jesus and her relationship with Jesus. All these other words had no meaning. Or there might be a lot of truth in it. But many times when we as individuals are hurting, we need to hear straight from the throne room of God. And that's what I'm sharing with each one that's here. And each one that's listening. <laughs> that Jesus is coming back again. Let's go into it if we can. I'll tell you one thing about the battle wall. She's put 
put something in that baby, when that baby's a grown man, he's going to remember. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. But guess who's coming again? But let's go back in history for a moment or two. The promise in its day. People in that day of history needed help. All was not going well. A foreign nation was governing them. And as time passed, the same right now, we'll read about it in a little bit in the Word of God. People began to ask questions. And uncertainty about Jesus' return began to spring up. What do we hear today? If we listen, where is he at? What's keeping him? <clears throat> Their disbelief is stopping him from coming because he, Jesus doesn't want to see them spend eternity in darkness. His love. But the future wasn't too bright for many of that day. As we look at it in our day, people in our time of history need help. We are living in a time of uncertainty. Very serious time today. But we need to put our faith and trust in Jesus. And that's very important today, just like in Jesus' day. Just like in the days of Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Elijah, Elisha, and we can keep on naming them. We need more than what we have. We need to have the power of God in our lives. Not to tell people what we have, but to let God see what we have. And in turn, others will see it as well. Have you ever heard the saying, my spirit and that person's spirit joined together? It's because of Jesus speaking to each one as an individual. I need to hear what God is saying. This church needs it. This area needs it. Right now, sometimes today, there's going to be ball games, two of them. It's going to draw many, many people. And when the ball game is over, it's over. But when you had an experience with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen. that experience never dies. Right. That experience stays with you. And that's what I'm trying to share. We need to hear from God. Because when we hear, hear from God, it will stay with us. And that's not the easiest job to try to do. And I call it a job. Many other people will call it a ministry, an anointing. But to share the word of God in a time of their need is very important. Many situations that we're faced with. How many here are facing with situations right now? You see, I'm talking. I'm sharing with you. Those situations can only be met by the power of God. Amen. And that's God's word. I remember I was unchurched, but I knew there was a higher authority. You might say I was uneducated in church and that was the best thing for me because the Holy Spirit educated me. The Holy Spirit educated me. Not man, not a denomination, not a seminary, but the power of the Holy Ghost anointed me. And when I had time, this is what I did. I was in the electrical business. And if we got rained out for whatever, I remember I'd go home and all day I'd be in God's Word. All day. And those times still penetrates my mind because I can go back and I, I can get, I know what scripture is saying. 
I might not know the book or the chapter or the verse, but I know what God's word has said because I've been in it. And I studied it hour on hour. Not in the seminary, not in some classroom, but just me, the word of God, and the Holy Spirit. We need to get back to spending time alone with God and in His Word through the power of the Holy Spirit and that's what's going to bring us through. Amen. This is not an easy message to preach. But that's the only thing that's going to see us through. Amen. Amen. The promise of this day we just shared, the promise of truth. We need to know the truth. The truth of God's word. We need to pray for those who are affected by this virus. But those that are affected by drugs and alcohol. Sexual addiction. Money addiction. The Bible doesn't say money is evil. It says the love of money is evil. Praise God. Based on the word of God, truth is a real state of things. Truth. What will set a person free? Truth. Truth of the word. Truth of the word of God. The truth will stand. In the end, the truth will will come to the top. And I know this. When people come against you, pray for them. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Pray for them. Mm -hmm. People have said many centuries, and I've said this before, and thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. For many years, from 70 A.D., to 1948. And 48 has not been that many years ago. I was living in 1948. They said that Israel would become a nation again. But they went around it for many centuries and said it's not a it's not gonna happen physically. It's something that that whatever. But God's word said that Israel would become a nation again. Amen. He didn't say figuratively. He said God's nation, God's people, it would become a nation again. Amen. And what happened? What happened? It's, it's time to quit making excuses and start saying I believe in what the word of God says. Amen. If God says it, I believe it. I believe it. Amen? Amen. Come on. When is this Jesus returning again? Soon. Soon and very soon. Soon and very soon. Very soon. Didn't the word of God, isn't it, it, it fascinating? And, and people say there's no God. The birth of Jesus, I believe, quote me, Bible scholars, if, if it wasn't about 400 years before the birth of Jesus. The Bible prophesied about it. The Bible told us about it. And what happened? Jesus was born. God became flesh in order to shed his perfect blood for us. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not saved by what man says. I'm not saved by the doctrine of some denomination. I'm saved because of the cross of Calvary. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now finally, I don't believe in prolonging anything. How about the promise of comfort? I did a funeral last night. Joy Duncan brother. The family needs comfort. But they need to have the truth of how to receive the comfort. And the comfort is knowing who Jesus is. Believing and putting their faith and trust in Jesus. Let me read 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, if I can find it real quick. 
Second Peter chapter 3, 3 and 4. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own flesh, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. They've been saying it for many centuries. The promise of it. You know, I can say I love you and really mean it. But tell, until I have experienced what you're experiencing, I really don't know how you feel. People ask me, how are you doing at the death of your wife? The 27th of this month will be 48 years. Well, now I can relate to people who lost a loved one, a spouse. I can relate to them. Why did Jesus, thank you, Lord, why did Jesus, why did God become flesh for us? in order to be able to relate to us. We know that Jesus loves us. But how many times we might ask the question, where are you at, God? Where are you at? Where are you at? In all the pain and the hurt and the suffering that's going on, where are you at? God has never changed. But God knew that we needed someone who could relate to us in our situation. I remember, and this was hard, it still resonates in my mind, in my heart, and all brings tears to my eyes. That when God called me into the ministry, the first place He sent me. was a children's hospital on Henry Clay Street in New Orleans. When I'd get off of work from the time picking you I'd buy vocational 14 years. I'd go to the hospital. And yes, the hospital has changed over the many years. But the people, the children that are still in it, still are facing the same thing they faced 20, 30, 40 years ago. The mamas and dads are still suffering, seeing precious little children with cancer, with tubes all in them, then, then praying for the mama and the fathers, mostly with the mamas. That is painful. Where are you at, God? Where are you at? They need comfort. They need comfort. And that comfort can only come from the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's very important today. The comfort that we need can only come from Jesus Christ. There's no one else can give it. I can have 50 people lined up. Say, I want to pray for you. And I say, I appreciate it. Pray for me. My wife is dying. She's going to be with the Lord. Pray for me. <coughs> and I appreciate the prayers. But the comfort that I need. You know with me this evening right now? The comfort <coughs> that I need has to come from the throne room of God. Because it's only God that knows how I feel. Amen. How about a mama who lost a child? Huh? Yeah. Whatever. We need to comfort people. And we need to share the comfort that can only come from knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But we can be an instrument to share that love. Amen. How many times somebody said it with me, I would do something different? Well, if you're not me, and you're not going to tell me what I need to do, I've got to let the Holy Spirit lead me. Am I right on that? Is anybody here hurt? Has anybody here got pain in their hearts? 
We can pray and, and be honest to live by it. Honest to live by it. We can pray. But until you're touched by the power of the Holy Spirit that can come from you, we appreciate the prayer. But how many times do we need more? How many times do we need more? Let me share something with you. Me and my wife were just married a few years. And we had a disagreement. Oh, yes. I wasn't preaching then. <laughs> and you know what? She told me she wanted a divorce. Has that happened to anybody? Or is it just me? Well, it wasn't so bad until the Sheriff's Department, Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Department, brought me the whatever you call the papers of divorce. And it hit me. It hit me. Anybody here been the same way? Well, I didn't try to get a baseball bat and find her and beat her upside the head to bring her home. But I tell you what, that was one of the best things that could have happened to me because I got on my knees and I started praying and I didn't say, Lord, change her. I said, Lord, change me. Amen. Change me. Amen. And from that point on, we've had one of the strongest marriages I believe that can be had. Amen. But you see, I faced reality. And a preacher has to face reality of the people and what they need. We need comfort. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. We need comfort. A believer's hope. We have a great future. Amen? We have a great future. Praise the Lord. No one knows what the future holds. But we know the one who holds that future. How many here right now would say, Lord, if I could, I'd change right now? Mm. Yeah. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. The Lord said this, this service would be different. So when we close in just a second, I'm going to get right up there. Anybody says, I want my life to change. I'm not interested in what's going on in your life. I believe my God knows it. But I am interested in praying for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you now. Amen. Amen.